today's um, episode is related to personal branding for us as customer success managers. But why is it so important personal branding for us? Well, have you ever been in a scenario where you are in a meeting, an internal meeting with other your, of your colleagues and you feel that the ideas that you give maybe are not resonating as the other ones next to you? Well, personal branding is also about that, like how to bring your value into meetings. And that's one point that we're going to touch into other, other, other ones that we have here for today. So stay with us because this episode is definitely one that you want to hear. Um, that way you can create momentum. So before I continue and we introduce our, our amazing guests today, I have to start with my good friend, Nav. Nav, how's everything over there in Sydney? Very good, Baron. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm trying to teach my uh, six-year-old how to read and write, which is uh, not fun. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> how are you doing, Baron? Sweet. No, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all fine. I just had a hair, haircut, so I hope everyone likes it. Um, but besides of that, winter is here. It's cold, but what can we do? That's part of, of this um, European life as well. Um, but yeah, now uh, I will go ahead and introduce our first guest of the day. And this is amazing because it's my first time hearing this transition from submarine officer in the U.S. Navy to customer success manager. Isn't that amazing? Today with us, we have Ty Lafrom, Lafrom Voice. Uh, uh, did I did write that? Yeah, that was close. It's Ty Lafrom Voice, but pleasure to be Ty on. Happy to be here today. Voice. <laughs> Great. Thank you for that. And um, so Ty brings his dedication and a strategic mindset to drive success for his customers. Isn't that amazing enough? Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. And uh, just the journey from submarine officer to a customer success manager is uh, definitely a unique one. So very, very interested to see that sort of uh, specific and unique um, view that Ty probably brings to this conversation. I definitely agree. Um, Nav, would you like to introduce our second guest of the day? Absolutely. And our second guest as an advocate for customer-centric culture, Sally has transformed the way businesses connect with their customers. In her role as a co-founder of Customer Obsessing Consulting, she helps build, uh, she helps customers build, she helps businesses all over the world put their customers first. I can't stop thinking about customers, so all I can say is customers. But thank you so much, Sally, for uh, joining us today. Totally. Thanks a lot for having me. I am very passionate about the topic that I get to speak on today. So yeah, it's a pleasure being here with you. Amazing. Thank you. And we are really eager Sally, to know what customer obsession consulting does for their customers. Can you give us a brief explanation? Maybe there's someone here who it's in a need to start creating that customer centric, which is so important. Our customers, we should be there always, right? And thanks to them, we can grow. So Sally, can you give us a brief explanation of what you do and what the company does? Absolutely. I'm always happy to talk about ourselves. Um, Customer Obsessing Consulting is basically a boutique consultancy that I got to fund uh, end of last year with two amazing colleagues um, by my side. And we advise customers um, both in Europe, we're based in, Ber uh, in Germany, Berlin, um, as well as in the US on all things customer centricity. Uh, as you said already, this is more or less a mindset that you could apply to any section in a business. But for us, usually the work mostly revolves around uh, customer success or all the teams that are left and right to us in CS along the customer journey. Um, so we help customers at all different sizes, either build a CS function, grow theirs, scale theirs with processes and tools. And actually, funnily enough, I got to work with Ty and his colleagues um, before, so I can share a bit on their journey, which is very exemplary of uh, how we used to help or, or how, we, um, how we try to help our customers to best grow. That's amazing, Sally. Thank you so much for that. And where can people contact you or which would be the best way if they need oh, any? Oh, we're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we are all over LinkedIn, probably. That's the easiest. Uh, you'll find us as customer obsessing. Um, myself uh, and both my colleagues, uh, Amy and Teresa, are also there uh, to always be reached. You can also reach us at hello at customerobsessing.com, um, but probably LinkedIn is the easiest. Amazing. So you know now that um, anyone, even an individual contributor, if you feel that your company is lacking of customer centric mindset and you would like to start something, you would like to create that momentum to start 
transition into that mindset, you can always contact Sally and brainstorm some ideas with her. And then from there on, you never know, something big can come. So that's amazing, Sally. Thank you for that information. All of the information will be in the about section. And let's begin with today's topic. So today's title is Speak Up, Stand Up, Personal Branding Strategies for Customer Success Managers. And the first challenge that we're going to talk about today is how to articulate your value as an individual contributor, which is so important. We all have different values to bring in an organization. And um, for instance, demonstrating your worth during meetings is something that we sometimes struggle. And I'm talking about internal meetings. Um, Sally, let's start with you. I have a question for you. Uh, what are some practical ways customer success managers can build a personal branding to emphasize their unique contribution when it comes to internal meetings? Any practical advice that you may have? Totally. Uh, usually customer success teams carry a wealth of insights and knowledge about the customers. We all are at the forefront of the customer journey, the face that our customers probably see the most um, while they're with our company. So all of this wealth should be brought back into the company and should be shared in internal settings. Um, really, the most practical thing, like that's already in the title, is being loud and vocal about it. But it takes some preparation um, to get there. So for me, the journey of personal branding always starts with an internal one. So having a look inside of yourself and think, what do I want to be known for? What is the value that I bring to the table? Um, what, what is unique to my role? And there we are already at the core of customer success. I own relationships. I know our customers inside and out. Um, I would always advise document it as well as you can. Try to write it down. May it be in form of a mood board if you're a visual person. May it be a bullet point list if you're more of a data point type person. And have that always at hand so that whenever there is already a spotlight on you or you get to take the spotlight, you have all this prepared and you can share this wealth back inside the company. Um, so then it's an introspection, it is a documentation, and then it's a way of formulating it to get it to the right audiences you know it's, it's interesting that, that you uh, say it that way and, and i completely agree um you know, especially when you know when you're a leader in customer success and you're sitting in a room full of other leaders of other functions um you're not as engaged with the customers as much as the uh front line are and so you're trying to make all these decisions and, and you're making all these assumptions and you make it based off of what you kind of know from a gut feeling and uh, somebody who speaks up in those environments and tells you actually um, from what I've seen with the customer, that's not right, will save us so much trouble down the line when somebody actually does that. So it's always welcome in meetings to just, you know, step up and, and tell us when we're wrong because for most of the part, our leaders are, are uh, driving pretty blind. Um, as, a, so uh, as a frontline CSM, um, do you have any examples or have, have you ever been able to speak up in a room where you're surrounded by a lot of tenured professionals? Yeah, I mean... It's kind of a daily occurrence for us internal and external. Uh, externally, it's a partnership we establish with our customers. They are the subject matter experts on all things their business. And then whatever our service we're providing, we're the experts. So they let us know all the details theirs. We're there to help a streamline integration. I don't know what I don't know about their business. They don't know what they don't know about ours. So establishing that trusted advisor role and being able to express feelings, ideas freely is really what's been able to allow these customers to maximize the value of the service that's provided to them. I think it also starts from the top down, right? Uh, creating an environment and a culture where people feel comfortable doing that and not, you know, so much so that um, they make makes them feel like, you know, they need to be uncomfortable talking in a certain setting, um, being open to it and actually seeing the difference when somebody speaks up, I think is really important as well. So not just, you know, hearing and not doing anything about it, that doesn't really create a culture where uh, people really speak up. It's totally, it's totally about us, what the people you work with, right? If um, Sometimes when you speak up, you're, you're, we are humans and we can, we can make mistakes, but as well, like we all learn together as a team, that's a team. We all grow, we all win, we all lose. And um, having a mindset of hearing everyone and uh, maybe, Breaking down what that person wants to say as well and apply it to the other ones is, is so important. It's like a team dynamic uh, that, that we all create as, uh, in that moment. 
if I've, I may add here, it's actually a mm -hmm. wonderful team exercise to build your brand. And this is also what uh, we did with Thai and, and their CS team is building this confidence collectively over everybody doing this exercise individually. Obviously, the skill set will grow individually, of course, because we're all different and we all express in different ways. Um, but setting the foundation in a team-wide workshop, speaking on how we all want to follow this new approach to being visible uh, can give so much more confidence because you're not alone in this journey and you shouldn't be. Uh, so sharing that with the others around you can be can be so much more valuable. I have noticed that, um, okay, when, the, when there's a group of people, of course, there's different personalities. And like in my case, I I can speak up, and it's and we have to know that when when we speak up, not avoid over communicating, right? But what happens with those who are introvert? Like what what advice Ty and Tali now will you give to those people who are introvert, but they know they have that important information, they have the voice of the customer that need to be in the meeting as well. Actually, I feel if an introvert makes a step of speaking up and sharing what's going on in their minds, it packs even more of a punch than when an extrovert keeps on talking. So that is the beautiful thing about being an, uh, an, an introvert speaking up in those sessions. People will give you the credibility that you deserve because you took care. You probably thought for quite a while about what you're about to say. And then when it comes out, it's a well-rounded and shaped um, argument usually. So that is that is the advantage that you're already having. But um, I come back to my original point, the preparation is everything. Um, there are people that can just easily think on top of their heads and get out whatever comes to mind. And there's other people that like to put a point on paper, give it a bit of reflection, maybe add some context, add some examples, um, add some flash to it that they feel more comfortable sharing it then. And when you go into a meeting with, let's say, a list of like three to five of these bullet points, you can probably pull one or two of these, depending on where the discussion is going. Um, so all about preparation for me. Yeah, and I'd honestly say, uh, kind of to Sally's point there, introverts have a lot of advantages that extroverts don't. More of, I know in my uh, world of CS, a lot of times we're dealing with uh, unhappy customers, a little bit frustrated, some sort of issue. So the introverts being able to, as Sally said, take ideas back, think on them, put some context, it lets emotions kind of come or settle down in a situation they'll be able to come back to the customer with well thought out plans and multiple different routes to achieve the ultimate goal. And it works out phenomenally, really helps their credibility uh, and really earning that spot as a trusted advisor. So there's a lot of advantages to it actually. And in situations where in a meeting, uh, an introvert doesn't feel, you know, comfortable talking, um, first and foremost, the moderator of the meeting should probably be the person to call on everybody to be able to have a, ch a chance to talk. And if they don't do that, it's a good idea to reach out to them to make sure that they do do that. But in any case, if you still feel uncomfortable talking in an environment like that, reach out to the person who's making the decision outside of the meeting as well. So at least then you can at least get your ideas across. Because it's really important to have your voice heard, even if you are uncomfortable in the certain setting that that's uh, being brought up. But at least you can bring the context of that meeting and then um, message the uh, the decision maker afterwards to just let them know what your viewpoint is. And again, I, I completely agree. The introverts usually have the best insights because <laughs> they are, are much better at listening and not so much uh, about the, the talking for the sake of talking. So who's who's an introvert here? Not you, Sally? Not you, Ty? No? <laughs> No. There's this there's this scale that we do in personality <laughs> tests. That's actually an interesting first step before you might come to the personal branding exercise in the team. Look out for what character types you have on the team. Um, and there's great tests to do that. There's the 16 personalities by Myers Briggs. There is uh, the Clifton Strengths Finder. Um, and actually, the Clifton Strengths one does have a scale where you see introvert to extrovert. And I'm, I think I'm like an 89% extrovert. So I get to excel in that in my consulting role. <laughs> but I have teammates that are higher on the introvert scale, which is amazing for our balance. So true. And I think that is also about timing. Not every meeting is for, and uh, 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 some meetings are for some specific goals and the other ones are for other specific goals. So I think timing, it's also important to analyze 
also maybe analyze a little bit who who is in the meeting as well. We all learn differently. We all build relationships internally with our colleagues in a different way. Um, the other challenge that it comes up with personal branding as customer success managers comes up with positioning ourselves as a trusted advisor to our customers. Now we are moving from internal meetings with our colleagues into our customers' relationship. Um, I will throw out, like Sally, let's start with you. Uh, how can customer success managers leverage personal branding to position themselves as trusted advisors to their customers? And how is it even related? Yeah, I feel Ty touched on it earlier on already. Uh, for me here, the first step is to see what environment am I in? Like how technical, for example, is the product that I'm, um, that I'm supporting? I was about to say selling, but obviously that is not the, the, the foremost purpose. Um, the one that I'm servicing where I help customers be successful with. Um, if that is a very technical product in and of itself, I want to think of how technical and product focused should my own brand be? How much of a product expert am I in order to help my customers? Or am I maybe in a different setting where the product is more or less self-explaining, but I'm the one helping a customer steer their strategic direction a bit more. And depending on their product and what my goal as a customer success manager is, I would look into how can I shape my personal brands, which I'd say has a, has a, has a hard core of just what I am as a person, but then some free space to design. And how can I design that to match this customer base? Yeah, it's all about as well preparing yourself. And as time comes, you're more experienced and you will com be confident as well and you will have more knowledge. Ty, I would like to hear your experience as a custom, as a frontline customer success manager and, and in positioning yourself as, as a trusted advisor to your customers. What advice would you give to anyone going through that challenge? Yeah, I would say kind of the biggest thing is be transparent with your customers. They're looking for a partnership, not another salesman. If you need to bring an additional resource on from your company to answer a question, do it. If you don't have an answer at that time, admit it. Say you got to take back and take a look at it. And then always look to provide value. As long as you're providing value, being transparent and working with customers to solve their problems and fully admitting if you can't solve a big problem till six months down the road, just set your timeline, set intermittent goals that'll help you to achieve that. As long as a customer's feeling valued, feeling heard and knows that you're in their corner helping them, that's, you'll quickly establish yourself as the trusted advisor. I'd actually love to add a comment to that because I can't like underline it enough. Uh, the the difference between a customer being in a sales phase and a customer then being in the post sales phase where we as customer success usually take them over. There's such a different tone to that. There's so, such different goals. The goals are way more long term, way more strategic. Um, so I can't underline enough the, the, the relationship side that Ty just touched on. Um, and being open about that too, like, hey, welcome to this new phase of your journey with company XYZ. This is how I like to shape it. Tell me how you like to shape it. And then take that relationship with the customer. But when you design your brands as a customer success manager, I would always see it in context with the other teams that are left and right from you. And how does maybe your role or your brand differentiate from a salesperson, from a technical pre sales person? from someone that is helping on the product implementation side, like see it in the context and see what differentiators are there. Yeah, I completely agree with both of you. And um, I, I liked uh, one of the things that Ty said, especially around, um, you know, if you don't know something, find the right person to to uh, answer that for you. Because um, I, the, the way that I've seen the two things, you know, to, to really build your brand with your customers, one is as much as possible, understand what industry um, your um, uh, solution is in and what sort of jobs to be done so that you can actually talk about it to your customer and they actually sort of trust the fact that you know what you're talking about. And the second thing is to work your hardest not to lose that trust. So if at any point you feel like you need to make up an answer, stop yourself and just say, I don't know, <laughs> and I'll find somebody who can answer that for you. And, you know, usually those two things are no, no customer comes to a CSM thinking that they're going to know every answer in, in the world. And that's okay. 
But what they want to know is that they can trust you to go and find the answer for them, which is absolutely fine. And no one's going to churn over you not being able to answer a question right away. No, and kind of the one thing I would even add to that is a lot of times these customers are looking at your service as a tool. So actually asking the follow-on question to truly dive down, what is the root of their problem? What is the larger challenge they're trying to solve? And then the solution could be a completely different direction. But by being able to dive down, understand that, you again, provide that much more value to the customer. I cannot, uh, yeah, I mean, all these advices that you are all given here, that's amazing. So anyone listening to this, pause, go back and hear this part again, because we are all touching and really important stuff, um, tasks. That, that we that we as customer success managers, we always need to keep on our minds when talking to customers to help us build that trusted advisor that we want, right? That we want to be seen like that. And not only being a trusted advisor, but highlight over all of the other trusted advisors that customers might have. We're not the only ones. The third challenge of the day that we have here when it comes to personal branding as, as customer success managers is spreading the the customer centric mindset through the whole organization which is crucial now doing it in a healthy way it's it's even better right because we have the two sides of the coin and um this involves on on amplifying the voice of the customer all the information that you that you um grab from the customer like when of course, it's not like this, but if you if you imagine that you are in, in, in a cafe talking to your customers, relax, asking questions, be curious, all of that information that comes from your customer, bring it into the organization. But there needs to be an open for that. There needs to be an openness for that in the organization. So I wanted to know um, how can organ how can customer success managers use their personal brand to amplify the voice of the customer within the organization. And I feel that we have touched on, on a lot of points here about, about this, but maybe there's something else that we can highlight. Totally. For me, that goes back to um, taking the perspective of the rest of the company that you're working with. Uh, because we in customer success, a lot of CSMs are inherently empathic people one customer as to succeed are very uh, relationship oriented people by default, but that doesn't go for all of the uh, parts within your own company. There's product teams that are super technical. There's support teams that are very efficiently or, or efficient driven. Um, there's leadership that has a strategic mindset and all of them have a different lens of looking onto the customer. Um, and for me, it's about adjusting the, the way that you communicate back to those teams, to their voice, not diminishing or not um, letting go of the, of the relationship side of the, of the house. But try, for example, if you're speaking to a more technical team, try to make it more tangible for them. Give them data points on how relationship is important over the, the emotional side that might help you to catch salespeople or might help you to catch fellow CS people. So adjusting your voice to different functions is is the one one thing I would say here. And then the other thing is celebrate the successes that you're making in customer success. So really shift the focus on the right side of what um not just customer successes, but like general success stories in relation to a customer you achieved and how that again influences the whole organization. So that if 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 I speak to a different function, they A understand me because I'm speaking their language as far as I can and B, they can take some, some, some nuggets of value for them to bring back to their teams. I couldn't have done any better myself, uh, Sally, to be honest. Um, I mean, when I think about, I think we talked about this in another podcast as well, Bear, I'm like, we got into a lot of detail about this, but um, the what's in it for them when you're talking to functions within your organization, I think is extremely important. When you're coming in and talking about what a customer, uh, what the customer voice is saying, why does a sales um, team care? Well, sales team care because you know this is how you can potentially sell better in you know in in your next uh, cycle of, of of sales for marketing you know like what's in it for them are these are what the case studies all the good stuff that's coming in there's so many ways to cut and and uh, paste the uh, the stuff that comes out of customer success to really paint the picture across your organization and I think that's extremely important to be able to 
to drive that credibility within the organization, actually drive the the importance of having a customer centric approach because it actually impacts uh, the different teams. Just have to make sure you're speaking the right language, exactly like Sally said. I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Me too. And there's actually a success story here. Um, Ty, will you tell the people listening your success story about how you were able to have a bi-weekly meeting with the CEO um, when it comes to the customer success strategy? I know maybe there's a lot of work behind in the customer obsession consulting, but there must be a, a double of, on your end. Uh, can you tell us the steps behind this? How were you able to show that value? How did you able to speak up your momentum and your personal branding? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, first and foremost, this only works because my company, our CEO, our executive staff really, truly believe in being customer centric. And if that's not there, it, it will never work. But for my company, they really dive down into this. And the Amazing. idea really got sp sprung from working with Sally's team. I know our CEO and one of her other founders had worked together previously. They had seen this success model. And we were looking to implement customer obsession teams. How do we keep the customer's needs forefront in the company? And it just worked out where the best way to do it was just let's go to the top. So every two weeks, me and my fellow uh, CSM, we present, we discuss every customer, the good, the bad, the ugly to our CEO and our entire executive staff. And that's where problems get solved. They understand the stresses. And then we can relate, hey, this is a busy time of the year for this person, for this, or this customer, for this reason. They're having this issues, which is causing this heartache. We can now paint more of a picture of to why requests are being made, why the struggles are there. And it helps realign, adjust priorities when it's coming from the top, there's more buy-in, It and then it just floods down throughout the entire company. So everyone's really dug in deep to each one, each customer to succeed. And it's just been great. To add to that, why I feel that obviously the foundational mindset that has to be there with leadership is non-negotiable. <laughs> if they are not interested in their customers, they probably wouldn't also be in the seat of a CEO. So that is, uh, that is the bright side to that. Um, but even with that mindset, the door to the CEO's table wasn't like wide open for Ty and his colleagues to just walk in. It took some so, some serious effort from them, working on their communication style, being super clear and delivering customer uh, results back into the company. And from there, they worked their way up. I remember that we prepped for the first um, executive meeting that was months ago, where we would compile the results of what has been achieved. We would constantly ask the question, why would they care about this? Why would they be interested in hearing this specific bullet point, for example. And because these presentations were so well prepared, so well delivered by Ty and his colleagues, uh, the value was kind of like prominent to leadership why they would invite them. So it wasn't an open door that it should, they could just walk in, but they basically opened it by being so well prepared, so well, uh, well spoken about the results that they delivered that there was no way around of like, we want to talk to them all the time, please. What about the timing? Oh, who was, sorry. That's okay, I was gonna say, that's actually amazing. Um, there are so few organizations, um, way less than there should be that actually does that. So that's actually really incredible to hear. Like, you know, there's usually seven layers to try and get through and uh, like, oh yeah, no, talk to your, your line manager and the line manager, like talk to somebody else. So it's incredible that Sally, you're able to bring that into the organization time. I'm so pleased to hear that you guys are actually driving that uh, so well as well. That's so true. And actually, I have a question. I was going to go with timing, but I'm going to change that to, to leadership because the podcast is aiming for people transitioning to customer success and people who are in the front line are in customer success. But I do want to hear um, Nav's opinion about what Ty said because, and, and Sally highlighted it, that one of the main components here is when leadership is open to it. Uh, and you as not only director, but a leader, 
how 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 is that important like as in in a leader perspective to keep that open mindset well as a leader in customer success uh, having been at ESM I'm probably a lot more open to to listening than uh, than a lot of other leaders the uh, the challenges arise in um it not being top down so i've worked for organizations where uh, it's been a constant uphill battle to try and get um the credibility the voice across and have anyone you know really care or listen um, and it just, you know, goes back to what Sally mentioned a while ago, which is, you know, I speak that language. But um, the organization I'm working for right now, it starts from the top down. It starts from the CEO down, all across the different geos as well. And uh, one of the things, and this it's an interesting way to sort of tie this back into um, one of the other conversations we've had, Baron. But um, the uh, CS teams are becoming more and more a commercial team. They're bringing in a lot of sustainable year-on-year growth. And so... Um, you're going toe to toe with the, the sales team and the sales leaders, you know, and they, you know, everyone understands the value of, of uh, what CS brings into the, into the organization these days. But um, for, I mean, if you've, if you've got a situation where it's not working and they're not listening, then, you know, you've got your work cut out, especially when it's not working from the top down. That's where you need someone like Sally to come in and, and change their mindset a little bit. So, um, but yeah, for the most part, what I've seen is that when it is open and, and it's honest, um, it's, a really good conversation we have monthly business reviews as an executive team um in uh in australia and we sit around we discuss each of the functions different you know challenges and 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 wins and uh, tie it back to where other functions can really help as well so it's really fruitful you know when you've got leaders like that listening and talking to each other that way that's so true and unfortunately it's time to start wrapping up today's episode um, there might be a lot of topics that we didn't touch, but there are a lot of resources out there. Um, there is a lot of people posting in LinkedIn. There are communities like CS Connect. There's a lot of webinars out there, certifications, a- anything where you where we were talks about personal branding. And I hope that we brought all of uh, everyone brought here really good tips and resolve the challenges that we were that we mentioned today. Always keep in mind to document. This is something that Sally say, document and then use that when you are when you have the spotlight. Remember that we are customers, we are partners with them, right? And it's important to continue delivering value, to be seen as trusted advisors, not as sales, and um, adjusting the voice, celebrating success. These are all of points that we all touch here that you can take notes and then uh, execute in your organization. And um, also, hopefully, if there's a leader listening to this, they're going to be open to the customer-centric mindset. I don't want to end the session without hearing any advice that any one of you have for anyone going through, actually starting to think about personal branding for customer success. Um, Any last words that you may have for them? For me, it's focus on the bright side, focus on the successes that you can deliver, focus on the wonderful things that you can achieve for your customers. CS tends to be a catch-all for all the complaints, for all the difficulties that a customer might have, uh, catch support tickets, what whatever it might be. But try to shift that to the positive side. Where were the moments that you could take um, a customer case, turn it into something greater, make them excel, and try to document that as well as you can. Yeah, my biggest advice, and it's something I've been doing since I started as a customer success, is just try to learn something new every day. Learn a new strategy for customer success. Learn a new strength you have. Learn a new feature your product has. Even if it's small some days, big the next, it's always just building a tool in your toolbox that'll make you successful down the road. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, being adaptable, sort of, you know, as the function grows, as your role grows, as your customers change, I think is extremely important. Never be stale in customer success because customer success is actually changing quite a bit. If you look at how it's changed over the last two years, it's pretty much a different function altogether now as well. So, you know, keep keep at it. Yeah, never give up, right? Never give up. Speak up, stand up. So that's today's. Uh, that was uh, that was today's episode. I hope you liked it. You can always hit subscribe so you can. Um, 
be notified when there's a new episode. There's a lot of other episodes that are coming. We're going to have even a recruiter as well, where we're going to talk about how, what's going on in the hiring process in customer success and in the world, which is a little bit heavy. So um, stay, stay with us. Remember, we are now in YouTube. You can find us on Spotify, on podcasts, on Amazon. We are everywhere. So don't hesitate to find us. Thank you so much, Ty. Thank you so much, Sally. And Nav, it's a pleasure working with you as always.